Hello there, and thank you very much for this opportunity. I would like, or I would love to say that this is the first time talking with Oscar winners, but I had an interview with your producers a few minutes ago, so it's now the second time. Ah. <laughs> but it's still a great opportunity. Thanks for having me. Uh, I watched the movie and I was, it was a great movie. It was a great experience. I'm really into the Latin culture. I was in South America uh, once in my lifetime. I'm really into dancing salsa, bachata, merengue, kizomba. I'm sure you all heard oh, wow. that when you were in Colombia and so this wow. movie is perfect for me I mean I, I was watching so many Disney movies and then this one came and this is clearly made for me you can say whatever you want and <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that um my name is Kenny uh, Patich, by the way I'm from Germany uh, I, I do this interview for the, the podcast that I'm doing it's called Tele Stammtisch and I want to talk about you about the gifts and the powers of the Madrigal family I mean we, we saw many different gifts and powers that they have and it's fun to explore them but have had you other ideas of potential gifts or powers that were maybe on the table where you said no this one not or is there maybe a possibility that there is a sequel or a prequel where we can see other gifts and powers uh, oh yeah i mean yes i mean yeah i'd say uh, along the way uh, we we entertained a lot of different gifts you know i think we have like you said we have 12 main characters it's a lot it's more than we've ever tried uh, to, to attempt in a disney movie usually it's two and they go on a journey and this is 12 and we're with them the whole time. Um, one of the things that I think we talked about early on was thinking about relating these, uh, you know, uh, family archetypes, the golden child flowers bloom in her footsteps or, or the mother who nurtures and so her food can heal. But along the way, we had some things like the party guy and balloons would appear behind them. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm remembering now there was one other one. There was, uh, the, the aunt used to be indestructible and we killed right. her several times throughout the course of the movie and she kept on coming back to life. And then there's a really weird one, which is a kid who was magnetic and things would stick to him. And we thought he was maybe like a kleptomaniac, <laughs> okay. uh, but, uh, <laughs> but we couldn't find parallels within families to make those work. But we have some really great art uh, <laughs> of all those crazy gifts. That sounds great. Okay, um, the next question that I have is from a good friend of mine. Uh, she is a, the biggest Disney fan that I know. And her favorite Disney movie is Elliot the Dragon. So now a complicated question for you. I mean, I, I, you have to listen to many, many questions for those interviews, I'm sure. And I want to ask you questions that you maybe didn't have before. So what, sure. would, what would happen if Elliot the Dragon would fly around the town and land in front of La Casita and he is hungry, his stomach is very loud, he wants to get some food and Julieta Madrigal has the chance to give him food. What would Julieta cook to feed a dragon? Oh Byron, why don't you take By the way, we've gotten this question so many times, but go ahead, Byron. People ask us this all the time. Uh, well, does the, the, the dragon have a heartburn? Because I guess you could heal heartburn with the proper food, maybe. <laughs> dragon thinking, I maybe I I think that could be a possibility. But I would I would watch that movie. I think that's a good pitch, Kenny. I think we should we should think about that story. That's a very <laughs> unique problem to solve. Okay, uh, can you tell me? Uh, Therese, uh, have you been, you were all in uh, Colombia, right? To, to create this movie, to meet people and uh, write this, the script for this movie, right? Uh, can you tell the audience uh, a cool story that you experienced in Colombia? Well, I wish I could, um, <laughs> but uh, so I, uh, Jared and Byron and Lin-Manuel went to Colombia, I think it was in 2018. I joined the team a little bit later that year and I was scheduled to go to Colombia with uh, our producers and some of the other heads of our creative teams uh, in March of 2020. And uh, so we all know what happened then. So that trip was canceled, but um, I did have the opportunity to engage with our amazing Colombian Cultural Trust, do tons and tons of research all the time as we were working on this film. They were so indispensable in helping us get this place right, this culture, the dance, the architecture, the textiles, uh, really we were, they helped us every step of the way as we were going along. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Jared, one question for you. I saw in the background there is a, a painting of, uh, is it Felix Madrigal? Sorry to hear it, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, him. He, is, he is one of my favorite characters and I, I love the, the song that he's making with his wife uh, yeah. I, because it's a salsa and, and, and I always love his <laughs> movements. I mean, he's a big guy, you know, I'm, li I'm a little big guy too, I'm fluffy. I'm, I'm familiar. 
<laughs> and when I see him, how happy he is, and when he's dancing, that's the same thing that I feel when I go to salsa parties, and then I'm there, and I'm dancing, people come to me, man, you look so natural, like, you, you are happy to dance, and I can get this, when, when he is dancing, I absolutely feel, I can see that this is not, like, a computer animated thing, it's a human, that's, so very, it's a great, great work that you did there, thank you very much for this movie, um, also, the, the, the music is great, there's a lot of fun and emotions in there um especially there's this one scene where um mirabel is is putting up some sand in bruno's uh, area mm -hmm. and the animation of this sand looks so amazing it is great okay um maybe do you want to tell me uh, some another cool story about the production what is what is the hardest work or what what takes the longest work and the hardest work and the most time spending work creating such an animation movie Oh my gosh, there's, wow. there's so you, much. Yeah, go ahead, it's, jump yeah, in. We should, we, should both, we should both jump in. I mean, you were talking about the, uh, we don't talk about Bruno's song. That song was a collaboration between Jared and Sharice and Lynn and creating sort of the story around that. And then Lynn taking that song, doing this amazing demo where Lynn is singing every part that, of those family members that are in there. And then that goes to our choreographer, Jamal Sims, who creates this amazing choreography, like you were saying with the salsa and just the dancing yeah. with the family members. He did the, the reference all in one shot, which is crazy, insane. And then Kai Martinez, our Colombian dance consultant, then worked for almost a year with our animators to get the moves exactly right. And our camera, our camera people worked with the choreography, the camera. And then it all comes together in the final film. And when you see it, that is just, hundreds of people diving in on with one goal. So I think that song is a great uh, indication of like how amazing our team is and how everyone builds on what comes before. I think they're just so inspired. And like you were saying, Kenny, like it, it's so fun and so yeah, engaging absolutely. that everyone wanted to do their absolute best. Yeah, and you did the absolute best. It's a, it was a great experience. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm from Germany and I'm very excited to see this movie again uh, in the German dubbed version because I saw it in the original English version and maybe again in the Espanol because I oh, you have no Espanol, not, not very oh, good, oh, only very again, good. a few words. Very good. So it's, it's very cool for me to see this movie again, maybe in different languages. So is, is there uh, some work for you uh, when it's about deciding how, to, how the movies get dubbed in other foreign languages? Uh, there is actually, you know, I think uh, for this movie, very specifically, the the Spanish language version of this, we very intentionally made sure that all of the actors were Colombian. And so that you would get a sense of that accent and that regionality within the movie. And actually half half of our original English speaking cast is also in the Spanish version of the movie because they are Colombian. So that's definitely something we think about. We have amazing teams around the world that do such a great job of finding the right personalities to mix with those characters. I think one of the joys of this movie is it is about this crazy extended family and everyone, no matter where you're in the world, has that. Everyone has a crazy family. And so I think finding these very unique characters, regardless of, of, of what language this movie happens to be in, I think people will find that they really relate to it and relate to the actors brought in for those roles. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I really recommend this movie and Stay healthy. That's the most important thing. Thank you. Thank you okay, so much. Kenny. Great to talk to you, Kenny. Okay, bye. I want to really see. Fun. I want to see your you. dance videos. By the way, you got to send some of your <laughs> okay, dance. Okay. All right. I will give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. Bye. <laughs>